Restoration 3, the new heavens, the new earth, and the new Jerusalem. In phase two restoration, the earth had been returned to Eden-like conditions for Christ's millennial rule. As its name indicates, however, the millennium is not meant to be a permanent state of affairs, but rather a transitional period that, one, fulfills in time God's promises to his people, Israel. For example, the inheritance of the land, Ezekiel 47, 13 and following, and two, fulfills his proclamation that all his enemies will be subdued by the rule of his son, the Messiah, Psalm 110, 1. Phase 3 restoration marks the beginning of eternity. With the creation of the new heavens and the new earth, the blessed eternal state will commence, Revelation 21, 1. This kingdom, in which the Father and the Son will reign together, 1 Corinthians 15, 24 through 28, Hebrews 12, 23 and 24, and Revelation 21, 22 through 24, will never come to an end, Daniel 7, 27. Within it, elect angels, Hebrews 12.22, and elect, saved humanity, Hebrews 12.23, will fellowship with the Trinity in a perfect new world whose blessings are at present beyond earthly understanding, Revelation 21.4. As blessed and anticipated as the millennial kingdom will be, the eternal kingdom will surpass it in every way, adding the presence of the Father to that of the Son, Revelation 21.3, lasting forever instead of a thousand years, Revelation 22.5, existing in a universe completely without sin, 2 Peter 3.10-13, and Revelation 21.7 and 8, and having as its headquarters a new Jerusalem whose architect and builder is God himself, Hebrews 11.10, and Revelation 21.1-22.5. 1 Finally, it is important to reiterate at this point what we have noted before, namely that it is the earth where God will reign forever, restored, remade, and specifically reconstructed for saved mankind's eternal blessing. Better than Eden, better even than Jerusalem in the millennium, the new Jerusalem will be the paradise par excellence, matchless, eternal, filled with all the blessings exemplified in the previous paradises, but without sin and without end, where we will live forever in the presence of God Himself. Replacement 3. The Advent of the Father In Phase 3 replacement, the double portion of saved humanity, that is, the believers of the millennium, will also be resurrected, and with the unalterable destruction of the old universe and the consignment of all of God's enemies, human and angelic, to the lake of fire, Revelation 2014 and 15, the process of replacing Satan and his angels with resurrected human beings will be complete. With the vanquishing of all God's enemies, even death, Isaiah 25, 7 and 8, and Hosea 13, 14, and with the removal of sin and unrighteousness from the world, 2 Peter 3, 10 through 13, and Revelation 21, 7 and 8, the way will be cleared for the return of the king, that is, the taking up by the father of his residence once more on earth. He will return not to the original Eden which Satan defiled, but to a new and extraordinary paradise, the new Jerusalem, likewise a paradise of divine design, now constructed in the form of a city, that is, a paradise specifically designed for mass human habitation, Hebrews 11.10. At that time, the glory will truly return to earth, and God the Father, who gave His Son to take on true humanity in order to save it, Hebrews 2.14 and 15, will, along with Christ through whom He made the world and around whom He fashioned the history we are now contemplating, dwell with us and we with Him forevermore. At that time, God will be all in all, 1 Corinthians 15.28, and that will be the most sublime completion to His creation imaginable. An Historical Overview of God's Disposition of Satan Given that this series provides a background for the study of the tribulation from the standpoint of the satanic rebellion, which is the tribulation's ultimate cause, we would do well at this point to provide in outline form the course of Satan's career, as we have studied it from the point of view of God's disposition of him and his followers. God's Initial Disposition of Satan God's First Best Will Reject It 
Although created in perfection and inhabiting a perfect universe, Satan and his followers rejected God's perfect plan for them, choosing rebellion instead of obedience. Judgment and Emotion Having rejected God and mutinied against him, Satan and his followers were judicially condemned by God for their rebellion, John 16.11, and removed from their positions of service to him. Judgment on the Universe The original heavens and earth, having been contaminated by the sinful actions of the devil and his followers, were summarily judged by God and plunged into utter darkness. The Delay of Execution Having judged the universe, God nevertheless deferred execution of Satan's sentence pending the completion of an as yet unforeseen event, human history. This delay accomplished. The glorification of God through the successful completion of His plan, centered upon His Son, Jesus Christ, in all its particulars despite all opposition. The vindication of God by demonstrating the devil's complete recalcitrance and unwillingness to repent in contrast to God's faithfulness toward his new creature, man. God is thereby vindicated in his judgments, Psalm 116, 11 and Romans 3, 4, and justified by keeping all promises of salvation to mankind despite satanic opposition, Isaiah 49, 9 and John 16, 11. The replacement of what was lost through Satan's rebellion in a manner that has ensured the free will choice of those who replace the devil and his followers. First Parole Satan was allowed the freedom to observe God's reconstruction of the world and his commencement of the process of replacement through the creation of mankind. The Last Olive Branch Rather than drawing the appropriate conclusions from the creation of man, that is, that God is invincible, and therefore that the carrying out his sentence against the devil was inevitable, Satan rejected this last tacit overture on God's part and used his freedom of action instead to recommence his rebellion, this time on the battlefield of human history. God's Interim Disposition of Satan Imprisonment With the second advent of Jesus Christ, the devil and his followers will be imprisoned in the abyss for the duration of the millennium so as to remove all satanic influence from the Messiah's kingdom. Second Parole At the conclusion of the millennium, Satan will be temporarily released and will stir up the peaceful world of that time for one final assault upon God, Psalm 2, 1 and following. The willingness of so many human beings to reject the perfect reign of Christ and the willingness of the devil to lead them in this last futile attempt to oppose God provides the final incontrovertible proof that evil and the rejection of God is not circumstantial but flows from the free will choice of creatures. God's Final Disposition of Satan at the conclusion of the Gogmagog revolution, and just prior to the creation of the pristine and holy new heavens and new earth, the sentence imposed upon the devil and his angels before human history began will finally be carried out. Isaiah 14, 3 through 23, Ezekiel 28, 11 through 19, and Revelation 20, 7 through 10, and they will be consigned to the lake of fire at that point and forevermore. Revelation 2010. The lake of fire and his final disposition in it, along with all creatures who chose to follow him instead of God, will stand as an eternal memorial to the folly of rejecting God and his mercy. Revelation 14.10. For by trying to replace God and his Son instead of serving them, Satan finds himself replaced by the Son who was born into the devil's world to refute and defeat him through the victory of the cross, John 12.31, Romans 16.20, and Hebrews 2.14.